What about other clubs? So it sounds like MK Dons are going to be okay, but we keep hearing stories that lots of other clubs are in massive trouble. Well, um, yes, you know, where we're fortunate is it's all our trading that isn't football that gives us our strength. Now, if we were only trading as a football club, I think we'd be a much more difficult ask for a bank um, and a much more difficult ask for investment or credit facilities or whatever. And that is the real pressure on the football clubs. Nearly every football club operates under a massive loss every year that's made up by the shareholders or the owners, uh, the, the, the people with the vested interest in the club, uh, financial interest in the club. And in normal course of business, people push it to the limits and they can just about make those numbers. And we always hear about one or two clubs in trouble that aren't paying their wages on time and stuff every season. But in the main, everything just about gets through it. Now, what this crisis has shown, because it's not just the obvious businesses like the restaurant shut or the hotel shut or the shop shut and therefore it can't be trading. Everybody else's business has a knock on. You know, we all, you know, I was reading about the dairy farmers who are having to get rid of milk because even though we're taking every gallon of milk we can get out of supermarkets, it's half their distribution chain has disappeared because they're not selling to the restaurants, they're not selling to the pubs and the club. You know, when so everybody, when even you wouldn't think there's a big impact, there is a big impact, and that means that that money then that these people might have from their other businesses to put into football suddenly isn't there well if you have no bank and no capital investment incredibly quickly you're in trouble and that is the panic in the EFL at the moment and I completely understand it and that's why I'm hoping that you know the support that we can see from our players will be replicated by other professional footballers around the country in support of their clubs that might be in an even worse position than us. What's your view on it sounds as though the most likely scenario of getting the season finished is it being played behind closed doors. Rick Parry came out with that statement last week. Yeah. As a business, does that help you much? Because you, you, I would have thought you need games to be played with fans there, but you, would you just be happy for the games to, to, to carry on? I think we're members of the Football League and therefore we really have to do whatever the, the, the majority view ends up doing. And, and, and actually this season, you know, I've got less of a strong view than I might otherwise have. I think if I was in the top six, or I was in the bottom three, um, then I might be more vociferous about wanting to finish or not wanting to finish the season. I want to do what the Football League want to do. And I don't think it is realistic that we'll be able to have people in grounds in time to finish this season. So again, it uh, depends, it, as I said at the beginning, Jeff, it's all dependent on timing. And that timing is not in the control of the football authorities. <laughs> it's not even in the control of the government. It's some unforeseen uh, virus that we're all trying to work out whether we can get on top of or not. Now, as soon as it's safe for players to resume together and train and play against each other, even without crowds, um, I think that would be something that's good because for, for me, players are losing... This is like them all being injured for a few months. They're losing um, their, their core fitnesses. They're, they're going to get more injured when they come back. All of this kind of thing. It's just not good for anybody because as a footballer, you've had a cycle since you were eight years old of, of, of you know, playing through the winter and the thing and then having your time off in the summer to do other things and then coming back to your football. Your whole body's in that routine and we're completely mucked with it. So, you know, I, I, I think it's all about timing. Um, if we can finish the season, I would definitely finish the season because there are, you know, the, the TV monies. It's not very big in the EFL, but it, it all matters. You know, we might be able to experiment with i for season ticket holders and to see how the digital use of I mean, this could be some upsides from doing it. But equally, I don't want to ruin next season because um, I think that when it's all over, or at least manageable and people are looking forward rather than back, I think one of the great things to be able to look forward to is a new season of football. That's one of the it's one of the things that gets us through the summer. It's going back to school. It's going back to football. Um, so, so I, you know, I, I'm one that doesn't want to see it go on forever. I wouldn't like to see the season go back to January and finish. But, but maybe that'll happen. And Jeff, if that was the common view of the football league clubs, then I'm a member of the football league. It's why I needed to wait for the players and the PFA to agree before I would ask my players 
anything because it's not fair on trying to ask people to do something when they're part of, a, of an organization without understanding what that organization needs and sometimes it might not be best for us we don't obviously much prefer to have people in and exploit our stadium and, 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 and the potential of that but if that can't be done and we need to play our football then I'm absolutely there to make it happen. And as far as the players are concerned, those ones that are out of contracts, and you mentioned there are lots, not just your club specifically, but those players that are out of contract, there must be a real concern for them because clubs aren't going to have any money. It's simple. So they must be very concerned. Oh, absolutely. And these are the same people or some of the same people that you're asking to take deferral and wages. Uh, and that's why I think everybody has to, you know, not everybody earns Premier League money. And, and, and as a footballer, unlike, you know, I was involved in music before and I still watch some of my old music people still playing and performing and doing really well now, you know, at my age. Well, but the football, you know, sportsmen and athletes, they do not have that lifespan. You've basically got 10 years. 15 is unbelievable. And I think the most anybody has probably done is 20 odd. You know what I mean? That, that's, that's, your, that's your entire career. That's your entire earning potential in the thing that you've put your life and soul into trying to be. And that's why it's a really hard debate. And, 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 and what I'm so proud of is that, you know, I asked my players to do something. Um, I explained to them why I needed them to do it. They can see why I needed them to do it. And they all did it even those ones that contract are, is up literally in a few weeks' time. So uh, that's why I think it's a good news story, Jeff. And, uh, and, and, and as I say, I think that um, if everybody plays their part in, in, in the way that we're all staying at home and we're all, you know, the pressure is coming off the NHS in the short term because of the lockdown. And you can see everybody, be, you know, the more we all work together, it's a bit of a cliche, but it will be the faster we get out of it. And what we all want is to get to the other end and still be here. What's, what, if the season does carry on and, and they try and resume it and we're into then May, June, July, possibly even August, with those players whose contracts are up, would, would you foresee those contracts rolling or would they be expected to play because they haven't played for the last two months before that? Well, the, these are the kind of issues that you, you, you've got to face. I mean, this is why it is not easy being the PFA or being the EFL because you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. You know, you, it wouldn't be right for people to be able to change their players in, in July and still be playing games for last season. That nah, obviously couldn't work. Um, that's why for me, timing seems to be everything because I think it's relatively manageable up to the end of July because the players are being paid by the parent club up to the end of July if they haven't got another team in between, uh, you know, beginning of July and the end of July. So I think that it starts to get a lot more complicated after July. And then you're also into FA rules, FIFA rules, UEFA rules. You're into, this isn't now just a, like, what can we all decide as the EFL to do? It's how do we actually, you know, be in line with, with, with our, what our national bodies do. So I think we'll see two things. I think we'll see real efforts to try and get things completed by the end of July. Um, uh, whether it's just Premier League, Premier League and Championship, Premier League and the Football EFL, Premier League, the Football League and the National and the Conference League. You know, it, it, I don't know how far it goes down, um, but that would be, uh, I think, on, on everybody's agenda. And I think if the times slip from there, then it is probably time to open another debate about how far do you go before you decide you don't do the season. But that decision absolutely isn't here and now. Because, you know, Germany have just gone back to training. You know, if they pull that off, if you can do it in Germany, there's no reason why you can't do it here. So, so you know, I think there's learning from other countries. There's our own situation in the UK. I think the government will be keen to get activity back to normal as soon as possible. This is costing, you know, unbelievable amounts of money. And, you know, people thought that they came in and helped the banks in 2008. Well, this absolutely minuscules that. And they've come in and they supported people. So, you know, for all the criticism of you could have done this and you could have done that, you can always do something better in a crisis. But actually, to save as many people's jobs as they have is, is, is not a bad... I don't want to make a political point. I just want to make the reality of crisis management point. You cannot deal with everything. You have to deal with the most important things. And I know in our business, our most important thing from day one is what's going to happen to our people. Because before the announcement of furlough, we could have made 500 people, laid off 500 people. 
I was facing the end, you know, everything that I'd built in Milton Keynes, and then I was going to have to let everybody go. You know, I can't tell you how the stress of those few days, Jeff, can't tell you. I'll never go for anything like that, I hope, in my life again. And that's why I am hugely grateful for the support, because it's given us all the chance to breathe. It's given everybody the chance to think about the future and everybody a chance to plan for the future. Well, not everybody. I know there's huge amounts of people falling through the gap, but a lot of people, the majority of people. And I think that's really important to give me the kind of hope that I'm trying to impound you today, that whatever happens, we'll have a route to continue and to go forward and to do the right thing at the right time. And MK Dons will do that in line with what the PFA think in terms of the players and what the EFL think in terms of the club. 